integrity of the polls when there's a team of four commissioners who are dissenting. Yeah. In as much as uh, Joy is clearly stipulating that they don't have, there's no mandate of them to agree, but what does it do to the integrity of the polls? I think we have to broaden the conversation. Um, and if we look at it in strict terms of the IEPC, then we miss the point. They are, the, the challenge with the IEPC is not the lack of talent. Uh, the challenge with the IEPC is not the issue of capacity. Uh, they have very good staff. Uh, there are so many Kenyans qualified to chair IEBC uh, and be commissioners. So that's not the point. The challenge is in the interests uh, that want to manipulate the process uh, behind the curtains. And as Kenyans, we must be very clear that there is need to, uh, to work out on how do we bolster democratic institutions and performance. How do we heighten political accountability? How do we enhance uh, civic engagement on these issues so that the powers that be that want to interfere with such processes for uh, selfish interests and other uh, selfish gains uh, are deterred? Uh, the, for instance, uh, other than the Political Parties Act that was amended uh, broadly, all the other electoral legislations uh, were stalled in parliament. And, and no one is pointing a finger at this point at the performance of my good friend and former boss, uh, J.B. Mturi, and uh, the, the longest serving majority leader, Aden Dwale, and the role of the executive in stalling those uh, bills and the responsibility of the various uh, committees to do this. Um, and, and without a, a proper legal framework to anchor this process, then you're likely to head into the headwinds. Uh, the allocation of budget to IEBC, it was frustrated for a very long time. Uh, the composition uh, of the IEBC, uh, the appointment of the executives, all these are issues. Uh, the cost of our elections is so high, and we know that it's actually a, a budget uh, made for corruption, to benefit uh, corrupt individuals involved in, in public procurement, and not really uh, the actual cost of our elections. So if we don't look at this broadly and just look at the seismics that are happening, uh, the volcanoes that are happening in the IEBC, then we miss the point. In terms of holding the team together, um, being in a leadership position, it's really the responsibility of the leader uh, to make sure that the team is glued together. And, and that is a, a personal issue with the Chepkat. We're not seeing it for the first time. We saw it soon after the court nullified the 2017 elections. We saw uh, commissioners reading from different scripts, uh, Rosalina Combe disappearing. We saw their long-standing feud with the former CEO um, who, who, who left, and, and, and this seems to be the shortcomings of the, of the chair, the person of the chairperson, and, and nothing to do with uh, you know, the, his leadership capabilities. It boils down to that, his inability to consult and pull along uh, his teammates, uh, and, and, and not m being so quick to make, to move along. I think that is an issue. The capability of, of Chebkati to command uh, you know, authority and, and be able to communicate proactively and strat strategically and uh, transmit this public confidence from himself to the public are things that are missing. And, and we can look at those things and say, um, how was the recruitment done? And again, if you go back to the history, uh, you will hear about the, the, the issues of of, of, of the appointment. There seems to still have strings uh, pulled behind the back from appointment to the current performance that we are seeing. So we have to look at the things more broadly than just zooming in on uh, the fallout between the commissioner. That we will be told by the Supreme Court, whether who has the facts and who made the right decision. In terms of holding the team together, Chebukati has failed us. In terms of pulling off a proper election organized uh, in a good way, I think parliament failed us, the executive failed us, and the security agencies have tried to make sure that the country is peaceful. The other commissions have tried to work in a good way uh, to support the process. But we must really broaden the conversation and say, look, uh, going forward, we have 
we had an, an elections operation plan. Uh, we have the elections that has been done. We will have the Supreme Court speak to this. We will have to audit the process. What will be the recommendations? What will be the exact actions required of the electoral institutions going forward? You know, including the political parties. Uh, yes, we have uh, a good number of women. The numbers have increased uh, significantly. But we need to see uh, further the two-third gender rule. How do we again not go into 2027 without uh, having this uh, implemented? How do we, one of the key critical issues that played out in this election is money. Uh, how do we regulate campaign financing? Uh, that is something that has been uh, stalled on by Parliament. So this is a more uh, broad collective issue that we have to look at uh, than just zooming in on the fallout. Because the fallout is a small issue, uh, not a small issue. It's, it's a leadership issue that we have seen as a weakness in the current chair of the Commission. All right. Let's take a quick break.